Look at this production quality of one arm chair. Is it recording? Yep. Are you sure the red dot's there? Because we, we can do this like three times. I'm in charge of my papers today. Thank God. Welcome back to the Southern IA. We have another video for you guys that my lovely girlfriend has coined. Book report series. Yeah. Last time I made a book report series video, book I, report asked, series. <laughs> I asked you guys to make sure that you liked and shared the video because this isn't uh, the type of content that YouTube really wants to push out to viewers. And it worked really good and there was a lot of support for the last one. Today's subject is drumroll molly. GMO crops and the COVID vaccine. Now this is not an opposition video to the COVID vaccine nor a support video for the COVID vaccine. I personally myself have not gotten the vaccine, but my main man Wayne just today actually got his second vaccine and he's actually just about to turn 87 on the 23rd of next month if you guys want to send him a birthday card. So the burning question in your mind and why you guys probably clicked on this video is what the heck does the COVID vaccine and GMO crops have in common? Well, the answer is mRNA or messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is genetic material that contains instructions for an organism to make a protein that that organism want naturally. This technology is used in both the COVID vaccine and GMO crops. And since the COVID vaccine and GMO crops utilize the same technology, could this be the closing of the argument that GMO crops are bad? And I state that because there's a correlation in between a demographic that supports the COVID vaccine as a saving grace, but also demonizes GMO crops as harmful organisms. But before we dive any further into this video, I gotta give a little credit to the Hefty Brothers. I actually got the idea from this video as I listened to an Egg PhD podcast, so thank you. Check them out. Everybody knows who the Hefty Brothers are. I don't. Check them out. Now it's gonna become pretty obvious in this video that I support GMO crops, which is true, and I support them for many reasons. But I also support non-GMO and alternative crops as viable business models for farms, especially the young farmers like CSA agreements. Or However, what I do not support is the slandering of one crop to bolster the marketability of another. For example, as you walk down the grocery store aisle, you can see all the labels along the way and you will see non-GMO printed onto a various number of labels. Problem is, is that there's actually a lot of those that are printed onto those labels that actually do not have a GMO alternative. And at that point, what that product is marketing is basically nothing or fear, where they're just using half a cent's worth of ink to print a dollar's worth of value onto their product. So as the general public and people that aren't involved in agriculture, I think that they actually have a perception that there's a lot of GMO crops. So how many do you really think there are? Hundreds? Thousands? A million. How about 10? Yeah, 10. Here they are, you ready? Coming at you fast. Apple, alfalfa, canola, cotton, corn, papaya, potato, soybean, sugar beets, and summer squash. Yum. Molly can cook a summer squash. I can. Yeah. Isn't that what you put in the oven? Butternut squash. Oh, close. Hey, that's not a GMO then. Unless the summer squash is a butternut squash. I don't know. You'd have to ask a vegetable farmer. No farm. idea. You'd have to ask a vegetable farmer. So let's talk about GMO crops and get some facts out there to you guys. GMO crops have been widely adapted among farmers. Planted GMO acres went from 4.2 million acres to 457 2 million acres in the span of 20 years. A study shows that GMO crops have increased production by 22%, which means that that's more food, fuel, and fiber for the world, while also increasing profits for the farms and their communities by 68%. Benefits of GMO crops for farmers and food sources include extended shelf life, Improved photosynthesis, photosynthesis, improved bio sequestration capability, improved nutritional value, stress resistance, pest resistance, byproducts, bioremediation, asexual reproduction. Give us a wink. 
One example of this kind of in my world is BT traded corn or BT endotoxin, a commercial microbial insecticide that's actually been around since the 60s. It's a product with an excellent safety record that expresses no harms to humans, other mammals, birds, fish, and the environment. It does this through selectivity and what the BT traded corn does, selects to go after, I guess you could say, is the insects that decimate our corn crops. So this is like a trait of the corn, not like a pesticide that you put onto the corn? Correct. Okay. So like it, I'll explain, but they, once they ingest it, yeah. The BT trait is not an insecticide or pesticide that we actually put onto the corn. It's actually a trait of the corn and it works through, well, I'll just explain it. So when part of the plant that contains the BT traded protein is ingested by an insect, the protein attaches to the gut of said insect. Within minutes, the insect stops eating. That protein starts to work away at the insect's gut walls the insects natural like rumen or i guess the insects don't have rumen so gut stuff like stomach acid i guess you could say uh starts to slowly kill them from the inside out they die sepsis there's a fancy one for you another reason i like gmo crops is because in my mind they're more environmentally friendly or green Currently in the world of climate change, a big word being thrown around is carbon sequestration because carbon taxes and carbon credits and carbon everything else and how do we get rid of the carbon? It's carbon sequestration. And carbon sequestration in the southern Iowa's mind and dumbing it down a little bit I think I could say is basically where a plant naturally breathes in CO2 or carbon dioxide from the air it then takes that carbon, puts it back into the roots, stores it back into the ground, therefore releasing oxygen back out into the atmosphere and putting the carbon into the soil where it can be stored and cleaning up our air. And our soils can do a really good job of storing carbon within their profile as long as we don't go tilling it. Because tillage can release carbon back out of the soil by breaking up organic matter and increasing the decomposition process. It's been stated that reduced tillage and no-till practices can greatly increase the ability of the soil to hold the carbon, and both of those practices are actually viable due to G or GMO crops. Because the GMO crops allow us to spray pesticides and herbicides onto our crops, to keep the weeds clear of the cash crop so we can grow them for a profit. Which historically, non-GMO farmers or organic farmers, they do not have, well, it's not historically, they do not have the option of using things like Roundup on their crops because then it's no longer non-GMO or organic. So to control their weeds, they do a lot of tillage. So those organic and non-GMO crops reduce the carbon holding capacity within the soil, and then along with, they also destroy the soil structure, create runoff, and that runoff causes water issues. So, thus, a statement of a GMO crop is a greener crop is probably correct. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> However, the little geek in me is something that's cool going on in the ag world right now is the use of cereal rye for organic and non-GMO farmers as like a, a mat to suppress weeds and that's pretty darn exciting. But again, I state I am not against organic or non-GMO farmers. They're farmers doing what they are passionate about. Some people see a monetary value to it. Some people see health reasons to it. But big picture, I can also see how organic farming can be construed as selfish because we can feed more people per acre using GMO crops than we can organic crops. And on the business side of things, GMO crops are way less risky for me to grow. Uh, when pests decide to come start chewing on my cash crop, I have a solution for them that's safe and effective. <laughs> which I can pretty much guarantee is not brewing some herbal tea, chewing on some wildflowers, and humming to my crops to heal their elements. Okay, okay, sorry, that, that is a little bit of a low blow. When I get a head cold every now and then, Molly does brew me a camel tea. Chamomile! A chamomile tea, which it, 
feels good and helps out, but just not as good as the head and sinus pills I take along with it. Now let's talk about the COVID vaccine. And as my special guest, I got Dr. Fauci. No, I don't. I don't have Dr. Fauci. Do you think they'd have, think that I have Dr. Fauci? No. Yeah, I don't think they'd they they have Dr. Fauci. <clears throat> God. This comes from Harvard. After the actual virus, they are ready to recognize and destroy it before it causes illness. How did you pass high school English? Not very good. <laughs> I can't read out loud. I can't read out loud. I'm aware. We're going to let Molly read this. I'll act like I'm reading it. How do COVID-19 mRNA vaccines work? mRNA, or messenger RNA, is genetic material that contains instructions for making proteins. mRNA vaccines for COVID-19 contain synthetic mRNA. Inside the body, the mRNA enters human cells and instructs them to produce the spike protein found on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 the virus that causes COVID-19. The body recognizes the spike protein as an invader and produces antibodies against it. If the antibodies later encounter the actual virus, they are ready to recognize and destroy it before it can cause illness. Jeez, that's just like listening to an audiobook. The same exact technology used in GMO crops. Another side effect of this global pandemic is the exposure of the double standard that there is when it comes to GMO crops. Most of Europe has had a strong position against mRNA that has kept GMO crops out of the geographical area, but has now caused an unforeseen regulation against the COVID-19 vaccine as well, which from what I understand is being relaxed for the research and development and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine a double standard. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the argument against GMOs. GMO crops are safe, environmentally friendly, a great way of feeding a population, way better than eating bats. <laughs> the pages weren't in order again anyway, so <laughs> I can go through it like seven times. But, 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 if you guys enjoyed that or you enjoy these little book report videos, uh, please let me know in the down in the comment section below. By the way, we have also reached 40,000 subscribers. We thank you very much. I think Molly and I are going to try and get a live stream put together for this Saturday. Uh, so if we can get that done, we'll see you live. Thanks, guys.